Since its founding in 1915, the United States Coast Guard has been serving the country. Since that time, they have been responsible for the protection of countless lives and have made significant contributions to the safety and security of the waters of the United States. Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today, we'll be looking at how the US Coast Guard uses intense techniques to stop speeding boats. Yeah, you heard it right. So, let's start our video. The United States Department of Homeland Security includes the Coast Guard as one of its components. Nevertheless, when war is declared, it is possible that the Coast Guard will come under the authority of the Navy. Over 40 search and rescue operations are routinely carried out every single day by the Coast Guard. Because of this, individual personnel of the Coast Guard need to have extensive training in order to successfully carry out these difficult scenarios. To this end, they will be engaged in regular training programs to support their work. Courses on non-compliant vessel pursuit are available to Coast Guard personnel at the Maritime Law Enforcement Academy. In these classes, members of the Coast Guard are instructed on how to pursue and achieve compliance with vessels, as well as how to do so in a manner that the school considers to be safe and professional. It usually takes roughly five days to finish one of these hands-on sessions. Marksmanship training, led by an instructor, is another requirement for Coast Guard members. First, let it out gradually, and then draw it back in the same manner. Including a yearly training session with a machine gun of 50 calibers, crews of the 45-foot response boat medium at the Coast Guard station in Ketchikan practice firing rounds to imitate warning shots. Typically, this is used to convey to an operator that their vessel is not reacting appropriately to directives that have been issued. It should come as no surprise that in addition to other training that Coast Guardsmen receive, they're required to complete instruction in aquatic survival if they intend to spend any time on the sea. The course instructs Guard members on a variety of swimming methods and safety protocols that they might use in the event that they experience difficulties while swimming. Candidates have been coming to the Aeronautical Technical Training Center for over 30 years to finish the rescue swimmer training, which is widely regarded as one of the most difficult courses offered by the United States Armed Forces. Swimmers in this area receive training to rescue lives in a variety of different circumstances, including extreme weather conditions such as hurricanes. Rescue swimmers are required to undergo further training that prepares them to do cliff rescues and emergency medical evacuations at sea. Training similar to this helps candidates for the Coast Guard prepare for the arduous and incredibly draining work that they'll be doing during water rescues. The hoist rescue method is one of the most difficult methods for rescuing people. This is accomplished by using a cable to lower rescue workers from hovering helicopters. As each member of the rescue team works their way through increasingly difficult scenarios, both the rescuer and the people they're trying to save are walking a razor's edge between life and death. It is essential for a member of the Coast Guard rescue team to be familiar with the many ways in which to interact with the survivor. When it comes to quick roping, candidates absolutely need to be aware of the similar procedures that are utilized. Since this information is essential for gaining a position in the Marines, training for new recruits in the Marine Corps lasts for 13 weeks. A technique known as fast roping is one that enables the deployment of troops from a helicopter without the necessity of the chopper touching the ground first especially effective in congested metropolitan areas or other limited spaces. The classroom portion of the Fast Robe Operator course introduces prospective Marines to the 14 distinct knots and procedure positions that are covered in the course. When members of the Marine Corps from the Kingdom of Thailand, the Republic of Korea, and the United States engaged in a joint training session, it was to be expected that there would be numerous joint fast roping exercises. They put on a performance of quick roping to emphasize their dedication to the long-standing alliance, regional partnership, and the prosperity and security in the Asian Pacific area. Exercises that include fast roping are extremely hazardous for anyone who participates in them. FRIES is an abbreviation for the fast rope in the search and extraction system. This method requires the participant to hang onto a rope with gloved hands and feet while sliding down without any safety gear. When a person is carrying a big load or baggage on the ground or moving slowly on the ground, fast roping becomes a much more perilous activity for that individual. Pararescue specialists, sometimes known as PJs, have a task that is just as hazardous. Air rescue professionals are responsible for rescuing and treating injured service members. They have received intensive training in the utilization of parachutes as well as scuba diving and rock climbing covering even the most challenging conditions such as weather in the Arctic. Due to the inherent risks associated with pair rescue, proper training is very necessary. They're capable of performing both traditional and unusual combat rescue missions. In this location, rescue workers are expected to be able to carry out even the most perilous and high-stakes operations at any time of day or night. They're required to have the ability to rope, repel, and hoist from any vertical lift aircraft in any kind of combat setting. 
The C-17 Globemaster is an airplane that is frequently shown deploying PJs in popular culture. The C-17 is a troop transporter and cargo aircraft that is also capable of hauling automobiles, trailers, and other forms of military hardware. To be more specific, they're able to transport 102 paratroopers together with their equipment. The Globemaster has a carrying capacity of just over 170,000 pounds at its very limit. Paratroopers utilize the C-17 Globemaster for their training missions during Operation Panther Storm, which took place in July of 2017. One of the many different types of training exercises that are utilized by the military, Panther Storm is a deployment preparedness exercise. The ability of the 82nd Airborne Division to rapidly deploy a worldwide response force in a matter of hours is being put to the test during the operation known as Panther Storm. And that's all for today's video. What are your thoughts on this? Let me know in the comments section down below. I hope that you found this video interesting, and if you want to see more videos like this, please consider subscribing to my channel. See you in the following video with some more of the latest updates, and until then, stay tuned!